Well, it seems like they are back at it again with the fake alien nonsense, and it's quite comical to watch the news anchors try not to laugh when they're talking about this, because we watched back with Fox News, they did a pretty good job seeming very serious about the experts warning us that their aliens are a threat. But um, ABC News this time did a little story about the extraterrestrials or possible communications from extraterrestrials coming from light years away. So watch what they have to say and how hard it is for them to keep a straight face. It's quite hilarious. Thanks for watching ABC News Live. I'm Will Reeve, and we have some big intergalactic news to get to. A story coming out of the scientific community in which astronomers say they're hearing signs from deep space. They're not sure what they are. It's only the second time in history they've heard these signals, and they're not ruling out aliens as the cause behind it. The interesting thing about these fast radio bursts, aside from what has already been mentioned, they're you know, small and all that sort of stuff, is that they're very far away. That we do know, because the ones that repeat uh, give us enough info that we can figure out where are they coming from, right? That's what you want to know, where are they coming from? And the, the first one that was found back in 2012, it's coming from a tiny, nondescript galaxy three billion light years away. Three billion light years away. Three billion light years, that's a lot of light years. Mm. A light year itself is like six trillion miles. So it's very, very far away. The second one, the, the one found recently by the Canadians, one and a half billion light years away. Now, could that be aliens that are, you know, in those galaxies very far away and they have some need to get in touch, right, with these very short radio bursts? Well, maybe, maybe, but two things. First, every time we find something in space we don't understand, we blame the aliens. The aliens are the universal bad guys for everything, whether it's quasars, pulsars, the, the hexagon on Saturn, if, you know, the, the tabby star, you name it. Something that we have never seen before, there are going to be people who say, you know what, Bob, it's aliens. Because we found more than 60 fast radio bursts, and most of them don't repeat, but we found 60 of them. So they're all over the sky. So how did the aliens over there get in touch with the aliens over there? billions of light years away and tell them, hey, you guys ought to be broadcasting fast radio bursts. So now what should we be excited about or, or taking note of with this new discovery, Dr. Olajay? What we are excited about when it comes to this type of uh, observation is that it's something new. It's, and, and, and so every time we see something that we've never seen before, that's an opportunity to learn something new about the universe. And as clever as humans are, when we learn new things about the universe, we also take advantage of that knowledge, right? To improve our lives in some way. And also, as we develop new technologies to better understand the things that we observe and discover, we also take advantage of that in order to improve our lives here on Earth. So, you know, the, the thing about fundamental science is it pays off in big ways that you can't anticipate at the beginning, but it almost always does. We are trying to find the alien. We are trying to find the alien. We are trying to find the aliens. I mean, we use our antennas every day. There are other people who are using antennas every day to try and eavesdrop on a signal that would tell you that there's somebody out there at least as clever as the residents of Passaic, New Jersey or something like that, right? So we are trying to do that, and that experiment is getting faster all the time. The, the bodies of that occupy the heavens are so spectacular, they're so exotic, they're so interesting, and just, you know, contemplating their nature, because uh, we've never seen one up close, right, it is, a, is a wonderful night of discussion in and of itself. Good morning, my name is Carol Rosen. In 1974, after being a sixth grade school teacher, I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space. And I said, uh, you know, teachers don't stop until June. He said, no, you have to understand, this is February and we have to prevent the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire the russians 
There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system, the first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists. Then there would be third world countries. Now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids. And then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. Well, at the time, I kind of laughed when he said asteroids, and when he said extraterrestrials, I knew I wasn't going to deal with that subject. And now we hear on the news just today, this week, that they've slid in another enemy. Only this time we're going to protect our satellites. In other words, we have to have some reason to spend these trillions to waste these dollars on a space-based weapon system, and they're all lies. There is an asteroid discovered in December 2004 called Apophis named for the Egyptian god of death and darkness. <laughs> it was named only after its trajectory was identified to intersect that of Earth. So, we get the orbit. Turns out, in the year 2029, the month of April, the 13th of April, a Friday, <laughs> Apophis will come so close to Earth that it will dip below our orbiting communication satellites. And it is the size of the Rose Bowl. It will be the largest, closest thing we have ever observed to come by Earth. If the asteroid goes through the middle of that keyhole, it will hit the Earth 13 years later. It will hit the Earth 500 miles, sorry, 500 kilometers due west of Santa Monica. Sorry, 500 kilometers due west of Santa Monica. Well, for decades, only crackpots and crazy people believed in UFOs. That's what I thought anyway. And then in recent years, it turns out that governments have been taking them seriously all along. Very serious. The performance characteristics exceed anything in our own inventory. And that, by the way, was the conclusion in this Pentagon document. This thing ran rings around our F-18 Super Hornets. Uh, that tried to chase this thing. It was briefly tracked on radar, but then it seemed to be able to, and this again is a phrase from the document, it's almost like it cloaked itself and became invisible. You'd think this was science fiction if you weren't reading it in Pentagon documents. And uh, we know now, which we didn't know before, that the government took this very seriously, and these things are being seen in our skies, whatever they might be, by pilots tracked on, on radar, and there's a serious defense and national security issue here. This is real. This is real. Today's report calls for the creation of a new unified combatant command for space, the United States Space Command. This new command structure for the physical domain of space led by a four-star flag officer, will establish unified command and control for our Space Force operations, ensure integration across the military, and develop the space war fighting doctrine, tactics, techniques, and procedures of the future. It is not enough to merely have an American presence in space. We must have American dominance in space. So important. Very importantly, I'm here by directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a Space Force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big statement. We are going to have the Air Force and we are going to have the Space Force separate but equal. <laughs> 